So welcome to uh, another lecture on operations planning and scheduling. We are continuing with module two, that is manufacturing planning. And the third topic in module two is product structure and bill of materials. The learning objectives of this lecture are to help you understand what are the elements of a product structure. And then we will discuss one of the important elements of a product structure, that is a bill of material. We will focus on what is a bill of material, what are different uses of a bill of material, and what are different formats of, of a bill of material. Uh, you should be able to understand how a bill of material is used to show an engineering change. So, so that is a very important concept as well. If the component or material is changed and we go for a new component or material, how does a bill of material show that? You should be able to use a bill of material to calculate requirements for sub-assemblies and components, their quantity and uh, uh, their level. And finally, you should be able to use a bill of material to calculate gross requirements for a sub-assembly or component. So first we will de de define what is a product structure. Product structure is focused on the quantities of components in sequence of operations that components follow during their manufacture into a product. So essentially, there are two things that are the part of a product structure, uh, the quantities, components and sequence of operations. So these are the two uh, elements of a product structure. Typical product structure would show raw material converted into fabricated components, then components put together to make sub-assemblies and sub-assemblies going into assemblies and so forth. So what we are discussing here at second bullet point is what is called a bottom-up flow of a product construction. So first the raw material is converted into fabricated components and those components are put together to make, uh, to make sub-assemblies and finally sub-assemblies uh, go into assemblies. So uh, that is a typical information that some of the formats of a bill of material show. So we can summarize this point here in, in terms of two sub-points or sub-elements that the critical elements of a product structure definition are is definition of the sequence of operation by which a product is manufactured. So this component of the product stru structure is termed as process routing. So process routing is uh, having a couple of further subcomponents. So uh, what are different operations that are involved, the definition of those operations and some other details and sequence of those operations that are required. So we will come back to this point in some of the lectures to follow, maybe after two weeks or so. We will focus more on the second element of a product structure in today's lecture and in the next lecture as well, and that is the bill of material. So the product structure contains the exact quantities of all materials needed to make a large size product. So this component of the product structure is termed the bill of material. So bill of material is focused on quantities that are required to make a lot, uh, a lot size of the product or maybe a single product. It depends upon the situation. So this is the point or this is the element of product structure that today we will focus on. And we will see some of its applications in the next lecture as well. So what is a bill of material? The bill of material contains a detailed list of all materials needed to make a parent item. So this is one of the uh, pieces of information that bill of material contains. So list of all materials that are needed to make a parent item. Parent item means um, a sub-assembly or a final product. The bill of material contains the exact quantities of all material needed to make a large size or one unit of the product. So not only the list, what, which components are required, but also their quantities. So first and second point are different. 
So it contains a listing of the materials as well as the quantities of the materials. And we will see that some of the formats of bill of materials actually do not show the uh, some of the details or they show the details in a different format. I mean, uh, some of the bill of materials show the sequence of operations as well and some do not show. But these two things are shown by all bill of materials, the list of materials and quantities. But there is some additional information other than these two points that is shown by some of the formats of bill of materials. So the bill of material may also have different names like formula, recipe, or ingredients. And these words are more common in process industries. So if you are making, for example, some, some paint, or maybe you are making some food item. So in that case, the bill of material will be called formula or recipe or list of ingredients. So in summary, the bill of material has at least two pieces of information. The list of materials and their quantities that is required to make one product or a lot. This is a lot. So lot, if this is not a lot, this is a lot. So lot here means a batch. So the quantity is required to make a batch of a certain product or single unit of the product. And I'm here just going to define process routing. That is the second element of a bill of, uh, of a product structure other than bill of material. But we will come back to process routing in, in a lecture, maybe after two weeks or so. So a routing can be defined as information detailing the method of manufacture of a particular item. So bill of material may show the sequence of steps but it does not show the method of manufacture. So these are two different things, and I'm not going into detail of that, but um, here the method of manufacture means the steps required to make a product, which machines will be used at every step, and the time required at every machine. So there are more details actually in process routing uh, than are, um, of course, in a simple bill of material. So that shows the sequence of assembly, but a bill of material does not show the machines and the time required at that machine and some other details. So that is shown by process routing or routing sheet. So as the name implies, it, it explains the operations to be performed to make a product, sequence of operations, work centers that are involved to make the products and, and standards for setup and run. So that is the setup time actually, and the run time or the manufacturing time. So this is the information that is shown by the process routing document. So we will focus more on, uh, on bill of material. One important point that should be kept in mind is there should be one product structure. Traditionally, different departments had different definitions of the product structure, for example, uh, engineering and manufacturing departments had a different product uh, definition. They focused more on the steps required to make a product and the components that went into the product. Marketing had a different definition of the product structure. Purchasing had sort of different. So there was a discrepancy in the definition. But nowadays, especially with the help of softwares, there is a single agreed upon definition there should be actually a single agreed upon definition of product structure uh, that is actually used by all relevant departments. And you will realize as you move on, move on that the product structure is such a critical uh, element of manufacturing planning that is used by engineering, purchasing, costing, manufacturing, marketing, different departments in different ways. Uh, but there should be a single definition so that it can be uh, accurately used by different departments. So there should not be different definitions. There should be only one definition of a, of, of a product in, in terms of product structure. So while today's ERP engineering applications permit the creation of alternative product structures that can be used for specific purposes, there can be only one product structure of record and that product structure should reflect how the product is built. 
So that is the main idea. So now we will focus more on bill of materials from this slide onward. So just to summarize what we have discussed so far that we are continuing with module two, that is manufacturing planning. And we had discussed sales and operations planning and master production scheduling. And from today onward, we will be discussing material requirements planning, but it is a big topic. So I have broken down into uh, subtopics. And today we will discuss the bill of materials, its formats and its applications. So there are many uses of bill of material and from these uses, you may get an idea of how actually different departments or different functions need a bill of material. So perhaps the most important function of a bill of material is product definition. Bill of materials specify the materials and components that are needed to fabricate or assemble the product. So again, this is the list of materials and components that are needed to fabricate or assemble the product. So this, uh, this task is classically assigned to the firm's engineering department. Another important function of bill of materials is uh, for some products, the bill of material is part of the processing instructions for producing a product. So we will see the examples of uh, um, some of these applications and uses in today's lectures and some in, in the following lectures. An example is a product where the placement of the materials on the bill of material is in the normal assembly sequence. So as I mentioned that from uh, top to bottom, if we define the bill of material in this format, we will discuss it uh, in detail today. So if we are showing the uh, bill of material in this format, then this is showing that this is the final assembly. These are the sub, -assembly, sub assemblies and these are the components. So this format and a couple of other formats do show the uh, sequence of operations that are required to make a product. So first we need to actually have these two components in order to make this one. And we need to have these two in order to make final assembly. So we can actually get an idea of the sequence of steps that are required to make the final product. So this eliminates the need for final assembly drawing in some cases. A bill of material can help us in service part support. So for products that have sub-assemblies or component that break or wear out, bill of materials provide a record of the definition of the parts at that track. You may have to build a, re a replacement part or a, a broken out part. So you need some details about the specifications, about the quantities that were required of a certain component. So bill of material can help in this regard as well. One of the very important uses of bill of material is planning that we will come back to in the next lecture. Uh, but just to give you an idea that bombs define what materials and components need to be purchased and what assemblies need to be produced to satisfy inventory planning requirements. So this is a very important element in inventory planning, the bill of material. The specific location of these items within the bill of material structure combined with their production processing times provide the necessary timing for material requirements and schedules for manufacturing. So material requirements planning uses these elements of the bill of material in the development of planning and scheduling activity. So we'll come back to this point in the next lecture, but bill of material provides at least two pieces of information for material requirements planning. One is of course the quantity as we have repeatedly mentioned. The quantity of different components required to make uh, the final part. And the second is lead time. So these are at least two basic pieces of information that the bill of material provides for material requirements planning. And we will discuss this point in great detail in the next lecture. Another important use of bill of material is pick list. Uh, the bill of material provides inventory management with a list of materials and quantities that are needed each time a product order is re released to the production floor. So the pick list acts as an authorization for inventory control to issue from stores the right parts in the right quantities so that production can take place complete. 
So again, this is the same point, but if you are going to assemble a product and you have certain components to be used in the assembly, so bill of material helps you to get the required quantities issued from the store uh, to, to assemble the product. Uh, and it could not be simply the assembling, assembling of the components to make the final assembly. It could be packing the different components in a certain quantity uh, if the customer order requires that. Yet another use, very important use of bill of material is costing. Bill of material from the core of product costing. Combining the cost of material necessary to produce a product with the processing and overhead cost provides an accurate picture of a product's total cost. So there are uh, at least three components of, uh, of a product's cost that uh, bill of material directly or indirectly helps us in, in, figuring, out the, in figuring out those costs. So one of them is direct labor cost, the other is direct material cost, and the third is overhead cost. Again, we, we, this is the topic of our next, next lecture or maybe a lecture after that. So once we will discuss process routing. Accurate product cost enable managers to calculate product margins and profits. Finally, the change control. When products require a change, the bill of materials serves as a repository of past and current revisions of the product structure. Through the use of uh, effectivity dating, we will discuss this point today's, uh, in today's lecture. What is effectivity dating? The bill of material record contains a complete structure change history indicating materials and process steps as the product was modified through time. So if you are, for example, going for a new material to be used for, for an existing product, so bill of material actually contains a record of previous materials and when it was actually started to be used for this product and when it is going to be obsolete and the new material will be in place. So it is a very important document to have a track record of change control, engineering change control. So we will focus more on uh, first uh, application of bill of material today, indirectly the second, and this final, the change control. But we will come back to the other points as we move on through this, uh, through this topic.